So as you can see I've levelled out and ground back everything that was welded onto those surfaces and uh, I'll show you on this one here. So the black line there, not the one with the squiggle, that's a wrong dimension and that's going to be cut there and so there's going to be a piece then, you can see the line I've put in here. So it's all going to be smooth enough. That bottom piece is going to be welded solidly to the floor the whole way around. And then I want to bring in a piece up as far as uh, there. And then it's going to be a small piece of 40 by 40 angle iron to go in here, to meet it there. And then uh, another piece just like on this side of uh, 60 by 5, but I'm going to use 50 by 5. And that's going to sit in just uh, there, coming across this line here, and then of course the lid on top. And then in the middle bits, then I'll bring up these as baffles, bring them up the full height, and, you, and put in a piece of T section to carry the tops of the tanks as well, so that they're not buckling underneath. So I've all four sets of uh, sides now fully ground out, fully marked up. The same on the other side over there, you can just see it there in the line, the little line. So that's led me to having my new little plan, which are the four pieces I need to, uh, so I'm going to cut these this evening, there's massive rain coming in tonight, another orange warning for uh, the south of Ireland, just one after the other, we're getting them, so uh, I'm going to cut these out of a piece of 5 mil scrap, and clean them all up and have them ready to go in. The other thing I can do because I now have the lengths uh, is I can cut the 40 mil angle that will go in here and then all four of these need to be trimmed in on each side and I have the lines drawn which will just allow the 40 mil and about two millimeters to fill it up with weld and allow for a bit of jiggle room and uh, so that's what I'm going to do now next. So I probably won't put these in, I'll just make them because I still need to keep continuing cleaning out the floors and re-welding everything and I've also got to drill holes through here to get a continuation of this piece and to get that welded, to cut that out there and to get that welded to the floor or to leak up through the seam here and out here. So we can't have that, it has to be clean lines the whole way through. Get down into the view there. That's uh, four of them now cut. They're all here. I'll bring them, I'll bring them back in. Uh, cut them with the jigsaw. As you know, the plasma is out of order. There are parts uh, having left uh, in Poland and they'll be here during the week. So there's no problem there. So the next thing I'm going to do is cut the angle irons that are going to sit there to do the return to catch the top of the tank. Uh, now that I've the four of these made, so I'm going to cut those now shortly. And then the other thing I did do, because there's huge rain coming in tonight, uh, I'm going to, I have the other welder here, but I've only one bottle of gas, so I brought them, and Darren actually carried it over because it's too heavy. Uh, the other gas, so I can actually weld these bits with the top and the return and do the full seam on them. And then when it comes to putting them into the boat, I've only the two sides and across the bottom to do. So I'll have this one done here, where I can actually see it, and it'll be a whole lot faster. So we get on with those things. I will say something about the plasma, as, as good as it is, that jigsaw blade, you can see it there, it just flies along, it's only 4 mil thick. So, uh, and that's the same blade that I've cut the other seven 
over uh, Manahawk of Reserve. One blade, Makita blade, and it's done all of that work and there's still a bit in it. So how bad is that? So here's my little list. So just to do the numbers I need, uh, it's uh, going to be an 8, 45. We'll transfer that. 8, 36. 8.40 and another 8.40 In case anyone's wondering why I'm using this block of timber it's because the blade is nearly at the end, I have a spare but uh, this way I can use up all the all the blade now I can see it about to run out of battery there. I got all four bits done there. Completely welded along each seam. And uh, perfect welds are okay. Oh, perfect. They're more than adequate for the job there. If you do, keep in a bit of diesel. But uh, I flipped this one though, they're still hot. So just a couple of tacks, I clean all that up on the inside. I might weld that inside seam yet, I don't know. Because I can literally fly along this crease the gun but I'll see uh, it won't really matter because as much as diesel may get up there there'll be primer going up there so they'll all be closed off either way so I will be painted anyway we'll tidy them all up I think I've enough done for the day so happy with that so I've these all made now and I've the outside which will be the top the top of the tank will be coming across here and these will sit in between the frames so this surface welded. Now there really is no need to weld the inside surface. I just put a few tacks there to stop it bowing while I welded the outside seam. But in hindsight, I'm actually going to close all of these off, which means they can be sanded and painted. And that way I'll never have anything getting up inside there or little bits of rust or anything like that, should there ever be any problems in the tank. So I'm going to get on with that now. So that's all, four of them now welded both sides, they're welded on the inside, which I'll sand back and get ready for paint, and on the outside, full seam, which will be visible, and the tank top will sit on top of this. So this is just one part, and that's the other part of the starboard side. And that's where the new pieces I've just made are going to sit in. And you can see the little line there. And that line there is the upper side, the top part of a new piece of, uh, I'll just run my fingers along here, new piece of flat that'll be welded and stemmed up as well. Uh, similar to this one here, and there's another one on the, the forward one. Uh, so there'll be another one on the inside of this one here, back in here. 
and the tank top then will sit right across that. So uh, I'm back in with my pen and paper. Uh, I'd already shown you the lid, uh, cut the holes that were cut in the new fuel tanks in the engine room. And they're going to be coming with these holes here to block those off. So uh, this is plasma cut, so I'm going to tidy up four of these. So bigger than those then are these holes here. Uh, that size, I have two this size, uh, another one there. And then I have, I think, similar again here and also behind me. So uh, I don't know if anyone is, is after seeing, I haven't really announced it yet, but there's a new live document gone up and it's really all the tasks in the order that they're going to be done and what I'm currently working on at the time. So it's like a live document, uh, Google thing that you could just link into and it'll be updated all the time. So what I'm intending to do as well at the same time, because remember all this when it's finished is going to be all completely repainted and finished and then I, at least I can move on with putting in the floors in here. So the next thing I'm going to have to do as well as doing the tanks is uh, right here obviously is our stem for our rudder. We're going to refit the rudder temporary, work out the exact mounting point and build a rather uh, chunky looking bracket to take the steering ram which we have get it equally uh, distant and make sure it's all in the right place with the swinging arm on it and everything and obviously the other thing and uh, it's not an afterthought I kind of always knew I'd be doing it would be either side here then somewhere putting in an actual physical stop to the rudder so that if this ever becomes disengaged and we have a free running um, swinging rudder that it can't rotate all around and come back and get the prop so the, the tiller arm will be limited we'll just leave it a little bit more than we need just maybe a centimeter more um, rotation in it and it can meet a, a hard stop so that if the ram ever fails that the rudder cannot swing around and hit the prop and of course leave us uh, damaged which is the last thing we want on a single engine boat so i'm going to measure up the uh, holes for these and then i can cut these then because I'm still waiting for, uh, I need to cut all of these out, I think I showed you some of these already. I need to cut these out, close this up and get an actual weld to the floor. I need to do the same there. This, this side I won't need to do it on this one which is the outer part of it because it will be welded solidly to the floor. It's only where it's internal in the tank where the diesel can get out under the stringer and run along and it will just seep out. It will be very slowly if there was a leak. But remember this tank is going to be air pressure tested uh, severely before uh, I'm totally happy and painted. So these are all the holes I have to close in the frames and you can see there uh, the different frame numbers that's technically supposed to be frame 3. That's frame two, I just picked the wrong one when I wrote there. And I've managed to cut so far, I've three of them cut out, uh, anything that's been ticked. And this is the last one of these. And then I'm left with these to do. And I actually have enough in this sheet to do it. Trusty jigsaw's cutting away there. And uh, flying through them, I'll round the edges slightly, not majorly, because I'm only gonna be welding them through the hole. I won't be welding all around the outside of the sheet each time. Here's my uh, hieroglyphics. So that's all of them now marked off, and I have eight pieces all there. I'll sand all those, get them all nice and smooth, and polish them. And I'll just take off a little bit of the corners, but they'll never be seen. They're going to be internal in the tank, and I literally will be where they mount up on the oval in the frame. They'll just be welded on that seam there, all the way around, whatever the shape is. So happy enough for that now. So folks, just to explain this new sheet that I have, and the links to this will always be in the videos. 
and they'll also be on Facebook and wherever else we end up putting them. But there'll always be a link on each episode from now on. So the date here will always be updated whenever I save it. That's the last time I really saved it. Uh, we're actually, it's a bit later than that. And I'm just using this to make this video right now. So as you can see here, I've listed out the future tasks that need to be done. A lot of them are currently in the work that's in progress, i.e., the aft tank, making the different plates, removing the tops and stuff like that. I'm giving them priorities. I'm giving them approximate dates that I hope to have this work completed, the percentage that it's done, and any notes that I have uh, that I just have. And they're purely some for my usage, and some would be for your usage as well, so that you can actually see if I have little things to put in there. And last, in the last column here. Uh, whatever episodes they end up in, these jobs, these tasks will end up here. So as it stands, uh, episode 31 was just published tonight, so that's actually done. So when I take this, then it's going to go like this. Now all of these will eventually get deleted down the road when I move down here, and I'll move the whole thing up each time. I'm not going to make it go on for miles and miles and miles and literally have it running forever more because I want it to be always uh, in view when you open it. So the other thing that's done is to make the aft tank the sides and the angles. That's now in episode 32. 32 is nearly ready and about to be finalized in edit. It'll be out in about four days time. So uh, I can actually tick this box now because live, that's what's actually happened. And also the plates to close in the holes in the frames, the big circles and the little ovals that are there, they're also done. So they're going to be in that next episode, which is already done. So there's lots of other little bits and pieces to be done. So basically this is just a little description video to show how this document is going to run and little uh, ideas. Now there is, apparently, I can turn on comments. I haven't tried it yet. I will see how that works in time. And uh, I've just made my mouse bigger so you can see everything here. So that's really how it is all going to work. And I hope to keep this updated so that you can just click into it at any given time and see what's coming and what's currently being worked on. So there it is. Thank you very much. Thank you.